Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the Gold Coast vs Carlton game review, going through how it was the Flanders and Nick Newman show and how I got a really good VC score I guess out of basically nothing and how if it wasn't for a bad third quarter that would have been an absolute ridiculous game from Newman. Um, I believe he had something like only a 10 or 15 point third and something like 50 points in the last or something. So before we get into the video um, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I actually upload and let's get into the recap. So as you can see here, I just want to actually check quickly with Newman what it was. Uh, yeah, 36, 22, 14, 53 as I was saying. So Flanders top, tied top scorer with Newman. Uh, would have loved to have had Flanders in my side. Imagine Flanders for Toronto. Imagine that. Uh, that would pretty much make the week uh, the best. Or, or... Um, if we actually look at here, uh, my lowest scorer is Doherty, who I should have traded out. Um, if I had gone Sheasel down back and Flanders into the, into the forward line, that would be the perfect one. That would be 45 points. And that would pretty much have um, completed the week, I guess. Or I could have just honestly traded out Doherty for, um, for Sheasel instead of trading out Cogs for Sheasel. But um, hopefully I can get a decent back um, backman in the last uh, round of the year or something like that and just go for broke with like a Houston or something and see how that lands um, as doki has been pretty shocking these last couple of weeks. And yeah, so we'll see with that. Or I could just go for Flanders and try and run the gauntlet, I guess. Um, but we'll wait and see. But yeah, Flanders was really, really... Um, hot early and I mean his worst quarter was a 26 and I thought he didn't do much after quarter time but he still got 26 point quarters which is on track for a 104 anyway and he got a 39 and a 34 to complement that. Took Miller 118 huge from him um he looks good and these do oh Gold Coast have the West Coast matchup don't they or do they have North Melbourne uh let me let me just double check I actually have a West Coast guy here um, they've got North Melbourne. That is a good matchup. So we're going to target. Um, I'm going to target Rory Laird and Flanders. I think. I think I'm gonna. Those are the two that I'm gonna target with the 202k that I have. Um, you got Doherty here. If we look at um, Flanders, that lines up perfectly. So Flanders for Doherty and um, someone else for. Um, if I could do, I can't do Windhager, that sucks, but if I could do Windhager up, um, to Laird, that would be good, but it could be, a it could be a Trelaw, um, as he's got Geelong in round 24, um, could be Petrarca if he doesn't show up against, um, Hawthorne, um, could be honestly Merritt, because Collingwood could, f uh, cause a tag there, could be Crouch, um, or Steele, or could be Darcy Parrish, to be honest. We'll wait and see on that one. But uh, there are big moves definitely to get Rory Laird into the midfield. I probably will go Rory Laird for a Parish just because um, Merritt in tag game still goes too, too worse. So could do that. Um, I don't think I will get Took this year. Um, he's actually ended up at a really nice price point at, if you actually look at it. 96 price stat. So he's going to be, um, if we look at it, that's... Um, Close to, I believe, somewhere close to, he'd need to go uh, 4.2 times 12. He'd need to go 150 to average 100 this year uh, for the year. So in the in the final round. So I'm really happy with Miller's price point for next year as he's going to be probably around that 860k and we'll probably slot into that M3, M4 type spot at that price range. Probably even further down. Is We're going to go Uber Premium, I think. Um, as if you even look at Mills as well, Mills is going to be really, really underpriced. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens with Mills. But I think Mills was just bad because they needed to tag um, tag Dawson out of the game as much as they could. And he obviously did have a bad game against uh, Gold Coast as well. So we'll see in preseason what happens with Mills. We might want to actually give him a game or two, um, given that he's going to be priced at 80. Swallow 108, um, Ainsworth 107, Raul 88, just as consistent as ever Raul, but not good enough in that uh, scoring-wise. Fiorini, Anderson, Atkins, Lukosius, Butterick, all these guys don't really matter too much. Um, is there anyone that I'm really looking forward to? 
I mean, you've got Johnson here, 33 average. That kind of sucks if, he, uh, if they don't play him again as um, that's going to put him um, out of the price range, I guess, uh, of a basement uh, price. He's obviously going to get the... Um, if he doesn't play again, he'll get the 27% discount and 0.73 times 33 is priced at 24, which would put him at 214k. So he'd just be above the 200k. So you'd rather him um, get a little bit uh, less... I guess, a little bit uh, less uh, in the final game and to get that back down to a basement. Caswell, Ballard, McPherson, Nick Newman, star of the show for me. I put a VC on him just because I was like, you know what? He's my best option. I got screwed over with Ramsden playing today for Hawthorne. And so I went for Nick Newman and it didn't look good, honestly. At three-quarter time when he was on um, 72, he could have easily, if he... There was one point, I think, in the third as well where he could have easily had about 15 points and he ended up walking away with, I think, two. So if he'd had that, he, he could have easily gone 140, 150 here as well as the fact that Zach Fisher was taking kickouts. Don't know why. Don't know why they were doing that because the ball wasn't going where it should be going and it, there was a lot of turnovers. So, yeah, just a, a weird one. But um, I guess Nick Newman got the job done and that's all that I really care about for my team. Um... For those who went for Hewitt, he was a tackling beast today and uh, 106, huge effort. Fisher, 103. Kono, 101. I don't know how this bloke continues to continue on. One, two, three, four goals in the four, in the second, sorry, and then one goal in the last five for the game. Pretty much takes Taylor Walker out of the Coleman race and is now his to, um, his to win unless Taylor Walker kicks, I think, something like 13 goals to none. In the last game, let me just double check with the uh, Coleman medal uh, leaderboard. It would do it, wouldn't it? Um, so, yeah, on to the other guys. So, Paddy Dow had a really good performance. Um, I hope he actually changes clubs, as if he changes clubs, we'll see him um, probably, I would say, be. Uh, yeah, so Taylor Walker, I believe, is going to be. Um, down by eight in the last game of the season, and you've got a Carlton versus um, you got Carlton versus GWS. Sam Taylor could knock him down to um, to probably I would say um, two or three goals. So I think Taylor Walker is going to have to kick twelve against West Coast to win the Coleman. That's it's going to be a ridiculous effort. He's Kerno's pretty much got that locked up. Unless um, Walker kicked three, which I don't think he did. I think he kicked two from memory against the Swans. Yeah, he kicked two. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, a little bit behind, I guess. Um, moving on, Paddy Dow. Yeah, so hopefully Paddy Dow gets that switch that we all want him to get for fantasy reasons as he looks really good when he gets game time. Nine games for 55. Um, I think you're still going to look at that and see... He has potential to go um, when he actually plays, even against against weaker opposition. If he gets the if they get the draw right, Carlton, and you have four or five weeks of Paddy Dow going um, huge, you could look at that and be like, okay, Paddy Dow's gonna um, get Paddy Dow's gonna get me um, 200, 300k very very quickly in the first five or six weeks. He's gonna average 20 or 30 above. What he did, he's going to average, say, 85 or something like that in those first six weeks. And um, so, yeah. But we could see him move to... I don't know if that it's, if um, they're in for him, but you could see maybe North Melbourne or some other weaker midfield like Essendon or something like that. Or I don't think Hawks would move in for him. I, I think the Hawks rate their own midfield. But um, a, a weaker Melbourne side go um, in for him and he could uh, do really well on the midfield average, 85, 90, and really do well. Uh, Martin Akers, Doherty, 80. That was shocking from Doherty, um, especially after the good first quarter. Just shocking outside of that. Just sucks, to be honest. Saad, 80. Motlop, 80. Weedering, Marchbank, Owies, Kemp, Cripps, 62. He's going to be so unders next year and so... I think he's going to be the pick rather than um, Mills. If we look at Cripps here, um, uh, if we look here, 88 um, for Cripps. So he's going to be well unders. Holland, Pitnet, Cottrell, Cunningham, um, 
Mackay, Cunningham, uh, De Koning, Sincotta, Kerno. So all these guys just not scoring enough. Um, Cincotta, I don't. I think he got injured, did he? Or just had a shocking game and yeah, just didn't score well enough and yeah, which sort of sucks. But anyway, that's that's really the review of this game. So if we go back here. That's the review, and I guess I'll see you guys in the last review of today, which is the, I believe, uh, if I can quickly bring it up here, the GWS game, I want to say, was the early or uh, mid-afternoon game on um, for AFL Fantasy, as the website seems to be going down at the moment, so I cannot double-check that, but I'm pretty sure that is the case, that it will be the GWS game. Anyway, I'll see you guys in that video. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.